Good morning and welcome to On The Water TV. I'm Andy Nebreski and today we're going to be fishing with my good friend, Captain Mike Hogan. Mike's the owner of Hoagie Lure Company. Uh, he's done extensive work with soft plastic baits, but he's got some new stuff out in the market that we're going to be field testing today. We're in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. It's uh, early August right now. Water temperatures are coming to their summer peaks. It's a time of year that a lot of people have trouble finding big striped bass, but hopefully using this technique, we'll be able to scratch up some nice fish today. You know, a lot of those fish migrate north, but we are blessed with these waters. A lot of larger fish do stay in the area and um, they just hold a little bit deeper and they hold in a few different spots. We'll be trolling our new, um, what we're calling the perfect tube. It has a perfectly formulated bend, so it just has a real slow wobble. And we're just gonna drag those into some real fishy places and work our way down. There's plenty of fish this time of year. You just need to change, change your techniques a little bit. When we're trolling, I do a lot with the braid backing as far as dropping it back. So there's a knot between the the lead core and the 40 pound test braid we're using. Okay. So uh, put that out about 10 or 15 feet. We'll be adjusting it as we go over drop offs. Okay. One of the uh, keys to fishing with a tube and worm is uh, you really need to add a nice juicy fat sea worm on there. We're just going to thread it through the, the head of the worm. Just get it set like that. But one thing to remember is if you set the hook on a tube and worm, you're more likely than not to miss the fish. So it's a great challenge to your willpower to not set the hook. Set the hook, you're gonna yank the tube right out of their lips. Okay, we get all our lead core off the spool now. Gonna set it and forget it. There's a fish. Oh, that didn't take long at all. So a lot of times when you do that, the fish will swim towards you and yep. uh, that's the advantage of these high gear ratio reels. You can stay on top of that fish. Yeah, this is uh, much more enjoyable than a lot of the tube and worm fishing I've done in the past with heavy conventional gear. It's a real nice setup. You get a graphite rod and really feel the fish. It's not cumbersome at all. It's a de decent striped bass. Not bad for the first one of the day. A 30 inch fish. Nice, Andy. Nice job. It worked. Look at that. He was barely hooked, too. That popped right out. It's a great tube. I'm very impressed so far. This is the first time I fished them, and uh, I think we should get them back in the water. So I think tube and worm gets a bad rap. And a lot of folks, you know, they say, well, I don't tube and worm, it's brain dead fishing. But uh, and I really beg to differ, there's so much to it. You know, to really do it properly, um, you're in and out of gear, you're making turns, you're dropping yeah. on fish, you have to understand tides, boat positioning, and, um, you know, it's, uh, I think it's a highly underrated technique. I think a lot of it, too, is the tackle we're using today is a lot lighter than a lot of the traditional wire line trolling that you see people do with big, heavy, cumbersome, rods that have very little feel to them. This is definitely a lot more proactive. Um, you know, we're holding the rods, we're not just spiking them as much as we can, and you know, you're feeling the hits, and you can uh, kind of get a good feel for when you're in the zone. A little drag right off the bat. This could be a bluefish feeling some head shakes. But I never really like to call it until I can see him. Yeah, this is uh, pretty much automatic, Mike. I mean, it's uh, almost a no-brainer. Every pass, we're at least getting a hit, if not hooking a fish. Now, the, uh, the tube and worm rig is actually nothing new. It's been around for decades. Um, as far as I know, nobody's really sure who was the first person to, to think to take some surgical tubing and run some wire through it and add a hook. Oh, nice. Oh, that's a good hit. I saw that thing go down. Here, I'll get this guy off and I'll, I'll take the helm, Mike. Yeah, that's a real big fish. Get this guy out of here as quick as I can. Uh, pretty much always want yeah, this is the one guy on the helm here in Woods Hole. And like I was saying earlier, too, you know, came on strong like a big fish, but you just never know in this tide. They can get with it. 
Yeah, I can be deceiving. I thought that last fish I had was a uh, respectable fish the way it hit. And then I didn't even see it, Andy. Yeah, it was it was probably a 28-inch fish. Oh, nice oh, that's fish. That's a nice fish. Thank goodness for that laser hook there. It's in a real tough spot. Now on these very large fish, I like to make sure I support the belly. We got a boat coming. Got a little small ferry heading through, so you really need to be on your toes pretty, in here. Yeah, I would agree. I so much so I didn't even see the fish you caught, landed, and released. <laughs> so I uh, think mine was bigger, Andy. I but. think yeah, you. Uh, <laughs> I'm putting up the numbers, but you get the quality one there. You know, you, you got to treat each bite like it's a big striper, even yeah. if it feels like a scup, because it looked very much like a porgy or a scup tapping on the worm, but. And that rod doubled over, and, uh, and we were in business. That's easily a 20 plus pound fish. Yep, that's respectable. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever, and uh, especially in August. You know, people think of August, the fishing slows down, big bass are tough to find, but they're still here. They're just a little more selective, I think, and you just got to do everything right to, to tip the odds in your favor. And so far, we've done that. You know, these, these fish aren't dumb when they get to this size, and for whatever reason, even the big ones are suckers for that tubing worm. You know, it, it's great if you snag bottom and get it off, you catch big fish. Um, there's really nothing you can do in common practice to mess up this bend. Yeah, and the great, great lures too, very durable. I mean, you can catch a lot of fish on a tube before you gotta do anything to it. And those are definitely well built and they appear to definitely be working for us today. So even though we caught a very large fish, caught a number of fish on the same tube, this particular tube is designed to have a perfect action um, for as many fish as the tube will last you for. You'll see when I put it in the water, it restores right back to its perfect bend. But that worm is definitely critical. Without it, you're, uh, you're only doing half the game. You're just tubing, you're not tubing worming. You know, the tube is so long, it's almost as if you were gonna ergonomically design a lure that a striper could easily throw. It would probably be a tube and worm, but um, you know, they're so fishy, you just need to stick with it. You'll catch more fish with a tube in the long run than using any other lure this time of year. And just it's really critical to keep that tight line, but Andy did everything right. So, oh, there we go. Oh, there, didn't take long. This is a real nice fish, real nice fish. And uh, when we're drifting in the channel like this, you really, really need to remember that once that fish turns around, it can accelerate on you faster than you would expect. It's still there. You need to treat each fish like it's a big one because you don't, you don't always know what you got your hands on. In a... Yeah, it can be a little deceptive when you have this much current and moving water. It's uh, sometimes the big ones feel little and the little ones feel big. But I think that's a nice fish you get there. Yeah. You hit hard. We've certainly seen a number of boats come and go. They're all mostly fishing on the top water, casting towards the birds, but. Oh, he's I, barely hooked. I haven't seen anybody else. Grab by the lip, he's got it by the, by the whisker. A tough fish to beat. Andy, I'll condition. take that fish any day of the week, Tuesday, on a middle of the week, middle of the day. Yeah. August, nothing. middle of August. It's uh, about as big of a daytime handicap as you can get. Yep. This fish will get this guy back in the water, give him a little. Revival, you should be in good shape. Alright, hold on, I'm going to swing it out. 